Tonight's news focus, Sarawak Budget 2025, Sarawak Premier Tables proposed 15.8 billion ringgit allocation. Sarawak Government announces basic necessities assistance initiatives to support targets group. Early childhood education sector continues to be strengthened. Assalamualaikum and good evening. The news begins with the 19th Sarawak State Legislative Assembly Dun sitting. The Sarawak Budget 2025 has been tabled with the proposed allocations of 15.8 billion ringgit, making it the largest budget ever presented by the Sarawak government. Sarawak Premier Datuk Patinggi Tan Sri Dr Abang Abdul Rahman Zohari Tun Datuk Abang Openg said this expansionary budget marks an increase of 2.2 billion ringgit or 16% compared to 13.6 billion ringgit in 2024 aimed at boosting government spending to further stimulate the economic growth of Sarawak. He explained that the budget with the theme Together Building a Prosperous Future allocates 4.9 billion ringgit for operating expenditure and 10.9 billion ringgit for development expenditure. The 2025 state budget will continue to be an expansionary budget to boost government spending that will further stimulate the state's economic growth. Thus, this budget proposes to increase the operating and development expenditure from 13.6 billion ringgit in 2024 to 15.8 billion ringgit in 25 an increase of 2.2 billion ringgit or 16 percent according to him the Sarawak 2025 budget is specifically designed around eight strategic thrusts in a nutshell the 2025 budget is framed across eight strategic thrusts as follows. First, transforming and diversifying Sarawak economy. Second, positioning Sarawak as a major investment destination and promoting SME's development. Third, Strengthening talent and educational development. Fourth, accelerating digital transformation and innovation. Fifth, enhancing people's well-being and ensuring inclusive development. Sixth, promoting culture, sports and youth empowerment. Seven, enhancing environmental sustainability it strengthening public service delivery and capacity Datuk Patinggi Abang Zohari further noted with a projected revenue of 14.2 billion ringgit and a total ordinary expenditure of 13.7 billion ringgit the Sarawak budget 2025 is expected to generate a surplus of 486 million ringgit at its core the 2025 state budget renews and reaffirms our commitment to championing the welfare of the rakyat through targeted measures aimed at alleviating the financial burdens of low and middle income groups and continuing to implement vital people centric programs and projects. Meanwhile, in a positive move for low income groups, the Sarawak government has introduced the Sarawak Basic Necessities Assistance SKAS, which offers financial aid ranging from 250 ringgit to 800 ringgit annually to help these vulnerable segments. Sarawak Premier Dato Patinggi Tan Sri Dr Abang Abdul Rahman Zohari Tun Dato Abang Openg said eligible recipients include Sarawak residents with household incomes of 5000 ringgit or less who will receive 800 ringgit in assistance. Senior citizens without spouses or children and earning below 5,000 ringgit will be provided with 400 ringgit, while single individuals earning 2,500 ringgit or less will receive 250 ringgit. 
This assistance will help them to purchase basic food items such as rice, flour, cooking oil, sugar, and other basic essential. For this purpose, my administration will allocate 450 million ringgit next year, which will benefit not less than 850,000 recipients. With this assistance, I may say that everyone will have food on their table. Datuk Petinggi Abang Zuhari also highlighted that the Gabungan Parti Sarawak GPS government is investing in senior healthcare through the implementations of the Senior Citizen Health Benefit Scheme. He elaborated that for 2025, 50 million ringgit will be allocated to benefit 100,000 senior citizens, providing cashless medical assistance of 500 ringgit for medical bills at approved panel clinics, particularly targeting the M40 and B40 groups, many of whom are retired or without a stable income. On another note, the Sarawak government continues to bolster the early childhood education sector in the region by allocating 20 million ringgit to Sedide, a Sarawak-owned early childhood education provider. Sarawak Premier Dato' Patinggi Tan Sri Dr. Abang Abdul Rahman Zohari to Dato' Abang Openg said the allocation is aimed at enhancing access to quality early education, particularly for underprivileged families. He further announced that the Sarawak government will provide 14 million ringgit for the annual special grant to the all registered early childhood care guidance education institutions in 2025. To ease the burden of parents, an allocation of 2.5 million ringgit will also be allocated next year for Tadika and Taska fee subsidies. The Sarawak Premier added that the subsidy will benefit approximately 2,500 children whose parents' monthly income is 7,000 ringgit and below. By providing this assistance, we aim to increase Sarawak children's access to early childhood education. Sarawak is anticipating a revenue of 14.2 billion ringgit next year, making it the highest revenue ever projected for the region. According to Sarawak Premier Datuk Patinggi Tan Sri Dr. Abang Abdul Rahman Zohari to Datuk Abang Openg, this revenue is expected from several sources including taxes, non-tax revenue, non-revenue receipts as well as grants and reimbursements from the federal government. He noted that the non-tax revenue will be the largest contributor at 7 billion ringgit or 49% of the total estimated revenue. 2.7 billion ringgit from cash compensation in lieu of oil and gas rights, B, 2.9 billion ringgit from dividend income, C, 853 million from interest income, D, 400 million ringgit from land premium, E, 120 million ringgit from cash compensation in lieu of import and excise duties on petroleum products, and F, 26 million from others, including licenses, service fees, permits, and rentals. Additionally, the Sarawak Premier mentioned that the tax collection is projected to be the second largest contributor amounting to 6.2 billion ringgit or 44% of the total estimated revenue. 5.1 billion ringgit from state sales tax, of which 4.1 billion ringgit from crude oil, liquefied natural gas and other petroleum products, 820 million ringgit from crude palm oil and crude palm kernel oil, 75 million ringgit from lottery, 60 million ringgit from aluminium products, 29 million ringgit from timber products, 
while the remaining 6 million from coal. B. 620 million ringgit from raw water royalty. C. 100 million ringgit from forest royalty, timber premium and tariff. And D. 422 million ringgit for mining royalties, land rents, and others. Datuk Patinggi Abang Zohari elaborated further. Non-revenue receipts are expected to generate 32 million ringgit, mainly for unclaimed deposits, overpayments recovered, and disposal of vehicles. He also revealed that grants and reimbursements from the federal governments are projected to reach 937 million ringgit, considering the federal government's decision to increase the interim special grant rate for Sarawak from 300 million ringgit to 600 million ringgit effective next year. On a related matter, the Sarawak Premier stated that 6.8 billion ringgit or 62% of the 10.9 billion ringgit proposed for development expenditure under the Sarawak 2025 budget will be allocated for rural development initiatives to ensure that rural residents benefit from developments in line with urban progress. For this purpose, he noted that Sarawak government has taken steps by providing various initiatives, programs and projects aimed at accelerating rural developments and addressing critical infrastructure gaps. Programs and projects set to transform our economy, enhance the lives and livelihoods of our people are included in the 2025 budget as follows. A. 650 million ringgit for the implementation of Project Rakyat. B. 420 million ringgit for Google Transformation Projects RTP. C. 265 million ringgit for Program Project HAS. The Sarawak Minister of Finance and Economy added that nine regional development agencies will also receive a total allocation of 300 million ringgit under this budget. Additionally, 742 million ringgit will be provided through alternative financing to support the implementation of various programs and projects such as roads, electricity supply and water access to better connect rural areas with economic hubs. These projects are anticipated to generate substantial economic benefits for the state, create new job opportunities for local communities and stimulate growth in the construction and service sectors. Meanwhile, Sarawak students pursuing the studies at higher education institutions, IPT, across the country received good news as they will soon receive a pocket allowance of 1,200 ringgit each through a special assistance initiatives introduced by the Sarawak government. Sarawak Premier stated that this financial aid will benefit 25,000 Sarawakian students from low-income families with a household per capita income of 1,500 ringgit or less per month. The money given is to be spent on food and essential goods to help them mitigate the cost of living. Under this budget, a sum of 30 million ringgit will be allocated for this purpose. He added that 500 ringgit book voucher will also be provided to IPT students, whether in public or private institutions in Sarawak, from families with a per capita income of 1,500 ringgit or less per month as part of an initiative to help cover educational costs. Additionally, he announced that free laptops will be given to Sarawakian students who successfully enroll in public or private higher education institutions, IPTA and IPTS, from families with a per capita income of 1,500 ringgit or less per month. This assistance will empower our students with the essential technology they need to excel in their academic pursuit with an allocation of 30.5 million next year, which will benefit 10,166 students from South. And that's the English edition with me, Saiful Bari Muhammad Monius, can be found in our official portal ukas.sarawak.gov.my and social media platforms including Facebook and YouTube. 
To conclude the UCAS bulletin, watch the feature on the Premier's Vision 2030 for eco-friendly transport. Hashtag Saluran Informasi Rakyat. Have a good night. VC Premier 2030 Eco-friendly transport Pengangkutan lestari merujuk kepada pelepasan karbon rendah dan sifar, cekap tenaga, medium pengangkutan yang berpatutan termasuk kenderaan bahan api elektrik dan alternatif selain bahan api domestik. Transit aliran automasi ART dijangkakan menjadi sistem transit awam pertama di dunia menggunakan bahan api berkuasa sel yang akan bergerak di atas laluan khas. ART menjadi pusat projek sistem pengangkutan bandar Kuching KUTS yang bermula dengan fasa 1 meliputi jarak 70 km di tiga laluan, laluan biru, laluan merah dan laluan hijau di Greater Kuching. Perkhidmatan bas hidrogen dan elektrik. Bas hidrogen diperkenalkan pada 2019, manakala bas elektrik pada 2021 di dalam sistem pengangkutan awam bandar di Kuching. Bas-bas hidrogen dan elektrik ini juga alternatif hijau untuk para penumpang yang mempunyai kesedaran alam sekitar di samping memberi kemudahan kepada para penumpang harian. Stesen pengecasan kenderaan elektrik bakal dipasang di seluruh Sarawak bagi mengurangkan pelepasan karbon dan menggalakkan lebih ramai rakyat Sarawak untuk memiliki kenderaan elektrik. Setakat Ogos 2022, terdapat 20 stesen pengecasan awam di Kuching. Dengan kepimpinan premier yang berwawasan, Sarawak akan menjadi peneraju di peringkat nasional malah ke peringkat global di dalam pelaksanaan pengangkutan mesra alam. Visi Premier Sarawak Maju 2030